And I finished uh, Our Flag Means Death, which I'm really excited to talk about. Uh, yeah, I, I, everybody, man, there's something everywhere on my feed. They trick you. There's a moment you're watching this show and you go, wait, it's Brokeback Mountain? No oh, shit. See, now you've, you've said the magic words, I'm back in. Yeah, my, my, my feed filled up with all these people that are like, I'm all about that pirate ship. And I was like, oh shit, oh, yeah. okay, I hear what yeah. you're saying now. All right. Episode 379 of the TV Dudes, recorded April 6, 2022. Failing Expectations. This week, we're talking about anime. No, we're not. We're talking about Failing Expectations. There's the difficulty of being the perfect super soldier in Halo on Paramount Plus. The difficulties of being burned out or failed spies on Apple Plus's Slow Horses. Or the difficulties of being insane narcissist capitalists on We Crash, also on Apple Plus. And of course, we've got a very disappointed Egyptian moon god in this week's dessert, Disney Plus's Moon Knight. But before we get to all that, I'm Randy. I'm Kyle. I'm Les. And I'm Nick. And is Gwyneth Paltrow going to be here? <laughs> <laughs> Just a very pretty lady. No. A very pretty lady. <laughs> and we're the TV dudes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love how our anime uh, April Fools kind of backfired. Uh, wherever they make anime, they just like shut our site down for a couple of days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or I guess not our site, but our RSS feed. Well, it'd been yeah. up for a little while, I guess. But yeah, we we had some issues with our Spotify feed. Uh, but it should be up and running. If you're listening to us on Spotify, we did not stop recording. We did not leave uh, out of protest for Joe Rogan. Well, clearly, uh, we, would, we, clearly we just Rogan. skipped multiple months and then recorded and dropped like a, you know, several <laughs> episodes at once. That's what we did, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're experimenting. We we're micro targeting. We're, we're micro blasting, whatever. We're, we're innovating. Like, just like we crash. Blitverting. That's what blitverting. I listen on yeah. iTunes. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys get messages about the April Fool's joke? Like when you shared it on social? Uh, no, I don't think I did. No, but I, I got a couple. I also don't <laughs> social much. <laughs> I I didn't know how many friends I had who like anime and were like, "Oh shit, I'll check this out." <laughs> I, did, I, uh, I did get Aww, one message. That's a bummer. Yeah. I did <laughs> get I one message bad. from a listener that was like, "I I wasn't going to listen to the episode," and uh, and then. Because they were like, fuck, I don't want to hear a whole hour about anime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I got that one, too. Uh, yeah. I think that was, that was John Paul that, uh, yeah, that messaged yeah. me that. Yeah. Uh, I got a message from Mandy, of course. Uh, and she was, like, so excited. But also, I, like, uh, Mandy knows me. She knew that was bullshit. So I don't know how she fell for it at all. <laughs> that was the feeling I had was, like, wow, that succeeded beyond my wildest dreams. Because I can't believe anyone <laughs> thought I had an hour of that in me. <laughs> the, the only thing I regret is, in hindsight... I really do think it would have been funnier if we'd convinced everybody that somebody just went on Patreon and gave us so much money that now we're <laughs> just a fucking about anime. anime show now. Well, I think, yeah. Randy, you sold it when you picked the shows we were going to watch because they were in the zeitgeist of that week for yeah, anime. Look, so I, that, I, that was I, a really I did, good sell. I did my research. I did my yeah. research. Like Attack on Titan. I'm like, oh, man, he did some research on this. This is like a, a, what we might actually talk about if we ran an anime podcast. Yeah, I like I basically Googled as like what's coming up in anime this 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 month. And yeah. then I looked, I was like, okay, that's going to work. That's going to work. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like the... Yep. Would have been really cool is if you would have put all the stuff that hasn't come out yet. And we would have just really trolled, but they already got to watch this. Oh, man, they're going to... Oh, I can't wait to hear that review. Yeah, so don't get used to this, listeners. We don't put this much work into an actual show. We'll put this much work into a fake show. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. but none to the actual program. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's let's jump over and start our TV diaries for the week. The diaries of the television dudes, brought to you by only the finest cocaine wine. Les, why don't you start us off this week? Yeah. Well, I've uh, been, of course, I finished out my Brooklyn Nine Nine re 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 watch at this point. I I didn't want to just completely restart Brooklyn Nine Nine at episode one. And so I jumped over to Community, uh, and I've been jumping around in Community. <laughs> it's weird the seasons of that that I feel like I've watched a million times, and then occasionally I'll hit on, and I'll I'll realize, like I'll suddenly hit on an episode and go, "Shit, I think I've only seen this one once or twice." Mm -hmm. It seems you like know what's, you you watch Community on Hulu. Uh, I am. Sorry. Yeah, 
Sorry to interrupt. No, I am. That is like whenever I binge a show on Hulu and then it like starts a new show, it's always community episode one. So I've been watching it in like five minute chunks every time I finish another show on Hulu. That's because Hulu only re- re- suggests you one show and then it keeps yep. suggesting it. It won't change the You'll suggestion. You'll fucking watch it eventually. I've had the same thing with Solar Opposites for two years. <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, it used to all, my, my Hulu used to always jump me over to 30 Rock, but Hulu does that annoying thing where like, unless you watched all the way through the last credit mm-hmm. to see if there's a stinger on every yep. single TV episode, the next time you mm-hmm. watch that, it's going to start you like 10 minutes before the end for mm-hmm. some reason. And you got to mm-hmm. do the start over. So there's a, like, if you're not paying attention, if you've just been vacuuming or goofing around the house or whatever, <laughs> like, I have clipped through three 30 Rock, like, or, or been watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine and realized I just watched, like, the first episode in a season and then I'm in a Halloween heist now. Yeah, yeah. And, like, wait, <laughs> then I've watched five minutes out of the end of four episodes. Mm-hmm. Stop doing that, Hulu. Yeah. So, uh, so I've been watching Community. I uh, also watched some <laughs> Trial and Error, uh, which is a show I love from a few years back. That is yep. just absurd. Is that is that streaming now? It streaming is not. Uh, it is on Amazon if you buy it. Uh, that's mm-hmm. where I have it too. Yep. Uh, Thirty. That's Rock. not the one with Ted Danson. No. Right? No. Uh, no. This is uh, John Lithgow in the first season, and then uh, yeah. Chenoweth. Uh, yeah, Kristen Chenoweth. Kristen Chenoweth in the second season. Yeah, wow. just absolutely absurd. Uh, there's a lot of uh, great comedy actors in it. Uh, yeah, I absolutely love that show. 30 Rock, of course, uh, Parks and Rec, then uh, Homework, like We Crashed, uh, Moon Knight. Um, keeping Up with the Dropout, uh, which is kind of how I ended up watching We Crashed, uh, even a little bit earlier than for the homework. Also because of Billions and getting too close to the full caught up on that. <laughs> Are all the high drama shows right now just like super fucking evil CEOs. Like, this is the only story we've got. Like, podcasts are the only place that shows come from now. Well, I also saw, I saw Super Pumped on your list too, I, in yeah, the same vein, right? I watched, and, and that was exactly the same thing of like, well, shit, I don't have a dropout to watch. I don't have a Wii Crash to watch. There's, there's no other one for me, right? Like, oh, I guess we'll watch Super Pumped, shit. And I'm enjoying it so far. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe TV streaming is trying to warn us about the evils of capitalism. <laughs> I think so. I don't know if they've noticed that we don't learn these lessons, but <laughs> <laughs> this is not how you teach us TV. Of course, Billions, uh, classic album series. I, I, if anybody's got Amazon Prime, you really, you should just go search those. Uh, there are some that suck. Some are just documentaries that ought to not even be on YouTube. But any of them that have the actual like classic albums, little intro and logo, they're from a few years back and they're a little bit hokey, but they're really nicely done. There are a lot of great interviews in that same vein. I watched the documentary sound city that Dave Grohl did a few years back. Uh, it's a bummer to watch a uh, video of Taylor Hawkins now, but Gosh, it's yeah. a really cool documentary about a studio. Nick got me to watch a movie with daredevil himself. Uh, Charlie Cox in it called uh, eat locals. That was really <laughs> cool. It, uh, it is a reminds me of like a vampire uh, dog soldiers. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, if you've ever seen yep. Yep. Werewolf Dogs, like the movie Dog Soldiers, it's it's about the best a werewolf movie can be done, and uh, and I feel like Eat Locals, it, there's so many good ideas here that you just, if, if anything, you're frustrated that they crammed like too many cool world ideas into this movie that they don't get to go into. Uh, really worth watching. Very well acted. Very fun. Kept up on From. I think there's one more episode in that, so we're not gonna solve shit. I can't wait. <laughs> can't wait to not get any answers. For yep, this. not going to get a single fucking answer. I think everybody's going to die. I can't wait. Next week, you guys need to tell me whether I need to watch this or whether they fucked it up at the end. And I'm, and I'm still thinking it's possible they got to. You'll fuck it never up know whether I'm lying until you see it. <laughs> I'm gonna, Maybe we're gonna there's more you. like great season finales out there, and they happen to snag one for their right. show. <laughs> uh, I got in the same vein of uh, Eat Locals. I got Nick to watch Let the Wrong One In, which I saw at Fantastic Fest uh, last year. And then I believe they were waiting for uh, one last film fest before dropping on streaming. But it is available for rent on Amazon and, and other streaming platforms. It's called Let the Wrong One In. It is a send up of vampire movie. It, just this absolute shitbag, useless brother of this kid in, uh, becomes a vampire. And and comes back to the house the next morning. Very Irish. Very Irish. Uh, Anthony Stewart Head is in it. <laughs> in it, it's hilarious. I love this movie. I don't know how they got him. I don't either. I think he owes a vampire movie every five years for the rest of his life or something. <laughs> and and like it's a lottery. 
because <laughs> there's also some music on the soundtrack where like i don't know where the money came from or if they have friends in these bands or what but damn there's a couple of times where like the music comes in and you go how the shit did you afford that no i know yeah. that song that's franz ferdinand you can't <laughs> afford fucking... franz ferdinand like, that's blister in the sun how the fuck <laughs> yeah no 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 something's up here uh so yeah i i love that movie i want everybody to watch it uh, super pumped, of course, in Moon Knight, and that's about it. All right, Kyle, what about you? I have been loving uh, the Minx on HBO Max. Are you caught up on that? I there's are they dropping two episodes a week? I feel like they are. Because I they watched... may. I actually I skipped a week, and then when I came back, I had two. So because I watched an episode. Because <laughs> last time, last last time I recorded, I watched two episodes. This time, mm-hmm. right before we record, I watched an episode. And at the end, there was another episode to watch. There are like six episodes in. So I feel like either I'm skipping weeks somehow or they're dropping two episodes a week. Maybe they did because I watched, I want to say we finished it yesterday and I think they only had four out. Yeah. They're, okay. Then, then they're definitely dropping two because I had five and six today. Okay. Oh, yeah. Anyway, sure. it's, it's, getting better as, it's getting better and better as it goes along. But I will say, I still find the protagonist super annoying. Yeah. I, you know, for me, it's an interesting juxtaposition between like who she thinks she is and who she actually is mm-hmm. versus like kind of the, the naughty world of porn. Yep. And I don't know where like the deuce kind of turned me off a little bit with how dirty it was. Yeah. Like you would just watch some episodes and be like, Ugh, also that really happened. I mean, that was David Simon and it was serious and mm-hmm. it was grim and it's like, this is fun porn this is yeah there's also by the way there's more dicks in this than i've seen i think in anything else i've ever watched so so the deuce is more studio 60 on the sunset strip and this is more (laughs) minx is more 30 rock 30 rock yeah yeah (laughs) sure um gosh i've been uh texting with you guys about this all week uh and i think some of you are going to watch this so we maybe uh we'll talk about it more later but i finished our flag means death uh this weekend and it really, I, I cut it back on just because I love that cast so much. I was like, I'm at least going to get to the Taiko Atiti episode uh, before, before I, I kill it. And what happens is in episode three, like the first three episodes are, you know, what they call in the story circle, fun and games. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like the protagonist kind of before they go on to the, you know, the other side of the story circle, them just kind of like, you know, fucking off. So like. Episode one was the introduction where they kind of had this like naval battle and like, you know, sieged, a, you know, a, a British ship. Uh, I want to say episodes two and three, one of them was on like a, a deserted island uh, or like a pirate island. And then the other one was at like a pirate bar. They were just like kind of cliche stories. And I was about to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. But then they introduced Taika Waititi, who's playing Blackbeard. Yeah. And like just as serious as he's played Hitler. Like two seconds in, you're like, oh no, this is Blackbeard the Pyro. I mean, of course it's Taika Waititi, but like, no, I, t- Blackbeard must just be like Taika Waititi. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and the, like, I'm not going to say that it gets like much funnier at that point, but what happens is kind of this plot hatches where you see, uh, oh, Blackbeard's tired of being a pirate. And now he finds this like Yankee boy on a ship and he's like, oh, I can just kill him take his identity and I'll go like retire off, you know, with his wife and kids and all his money. And that's going to be my way of like getting out of the pirate life. And there's a pirate who like his first mate is like, no, you got to stay and do it with us. And you know, it, but it kind of builds like, okay, let's see what's going on here. And then the next episode, it takes a 180 and then another 180 until you realize like, oh no, I'm, and I don't mean this in a bad way. I'm actually in a good way, but it's kind of like a Brokeback Mountain story mm-hmm. where it's like it's about all these men who are living the pirate life and are at sea who, you know, they say like uh, anything goes on the ship and you start to see these like relationships form. And it's I don't want to say it's actually for, for a heteronormal male. It is kind of bizarre to watch because you really are watching like love stories and like relationship stories, but like the gender has nothing to do with it. It's all, and it's not like gratuitous. Like, I mean, people are fucking, of course, but it's, it's just really interesting. And then the, the 
big kicker is in the first couple episodes when you're introduced to Rise Darby's character, you know, you see him getting made fun of as a kid and you see like all this stuff happening to him and he's got this high pitched voice and all. The, and you're thinking, oh, he's a character actor. He just went over the top of that character. But no, the whole time it's like, oh, no, he's he's gay. Like, mm -hmm. that's why like that's why these kids are picking on him and making fun of him. Like, that's why he's making these decisions. Or he's questioning his sexuality. I actually think it may be more of a, like a question. I guess I gotta story. question my own heteronormativism because the only thing I heard about that was pirates fucking, and that's the only thing I want to watch now. <laughs> like for me, that is not the, that's the selling point. That's yeah. not the bizarre part to get around. That's the what I'm going to this Bro show. Brokeback for. Lagoon. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's let's you watch them fucking, fuck. and then you get pirates jealous because they're not getting any, and then you get. Like, and I don't think there's any just like straight out like homophobes. I think it literally is just all played like this is what happens at sea. Every it's normal to everybody, you know. <laughs> that might be go. the most historically <laughs> accurate thing in the entire show. <laughs> well, you start to think about it, and you're like, "Oh shit, this probably is what pirates did." <laughs> but the no, the laughs keep coming, and then the last couple episodes, they really kind of dial the the story and the the drama up and they leave for a great season too. Like I, who knows how many seasons they'll do this, but I definitely know like we're in, we're in for another good one. Sorry. I took so much time with that. Well, you successfully sold me. So it was, it was worth it. Yeah. I'm yeah, definitely going to yeah. give this a watch. People have been talking about it. I, I feel like, I feel like they, they dropped a bad intro, uh, which happens sometimes and that, that I need to catch up on it. You know, I, I wonder if it's going to be like Parks and Rec, where in hindsight, it's fun to go back to that early stuff you didn't like as much. You mean like Parks and Rec and that the first season's still no good? <laughs> yeah. We've been over this, Kyle. No, it's not. If the first episode of Ted Lasso didn't knock you out of the park, I would hope that after we've all gushed about it, you know, people would, would go at least watch two and three. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and that's kind of what I'm, I'm looking to do. I don't this. go back like, and you know watch what? that first season of Legends of Tomorrow ever. <laughs> no, no, I'm good on rip. We're good. I don't think anyone has. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't think it happened. It, it's not in continuity at this point. So whatever. Here, I'll rush through my last few because I, I know I've totally gone over on time. Did you see the Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, April Fools? I saw oh, it that it existed, but I actually like something I don't want to watch ever. I was gonna say I like <laughs> it. Made me like Jimmy Kimmel less because I like Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Kimmel, and I fucking hate Jimmy Fallon. And I don't want to. Th I don't want to think the two of them like each other in any way. I want them to hate each other. I want them to be one. I want them to duel to the death and for Jimmy Kimmel yeah. to win. Yeah, I want. I, let's have a fucking like a fucking just death match between all night hosts, and like we have to get rid of half <laughs> Anchorman style. Yeah. Look, as long as Jimmy Fallon is is gone, I don't care what happens. There was some jokes made at the expense of Jimmy Fallon is comedy for soccer moms. That's insulting to soccer moms. Yeah, I think I think soccer moms are, are you know a little more wine mom than that. That's rough. Come on, guys. Well, what's wrong? What's is this so funny? <laughs> that was my Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> it didn't even look good on the camera. That was the only thing when we watched that uh, that uh, the improv thing with like Conan and Brian trying to solve a mystery. I was like, okay, Conan, you're not the greatest here, but at least we're not doing Jimmy Fallon. That would have been yeah. a fucking yeah. nightmare. No, if Jimmy Fallon is on that show, I'm, I'm stopping watching it. Like, yes. that's, that's it. You know what? I will say this. A testament to Jimmy Kimmel is that Jimmy Fallon, most of the stuff he did on the Kimmel show were, was, were like Kimmel's bits, like mean tweets and uh, bringing out his relative. Like, pretty much all of Kimmel's bits he did on there. And a testament to Jimmy Kimmel, they were still funny with somebody else, like, doing the bits. Well, were they just, were they only funny because Jimmy Fallon kept laughing at him every two seconds? <laughs> There's probably no, I a think, little bit of that. I think what Kyle means is that the setup of that scenario, like that Jimmy Kimmel's just overall structure works, which I agree with, is that... So you're saying Kimmel's show is Fallon-proof? <laughs> it's Fallon-proof, <laughs> yes! It's infallible. It's infallible. It's infallible. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. Let's see. Uh, Young Rock continues to be really good. Oh my gosh. Outside of the homework, I have one last one to talk about. I watched this fucking show that like broke my mind. All right, I'm telling you, broke my freaking mind, motherfucker. Guys. If you say anything about Top Gear, I'm gonna fucking lose it. It's hyperdrive, <laughs> isn't it? Oh no, this is mind breaking. This is like you guys will give this one to me. Um, have any of you seen the new game show? Is it cake? <laughs> 
Yes. No, no, dude, but I'm not surprised you have. Dude, yes. I did a Stranger Than Fan Fiction on this, and suddenly they made an American version, so yes, I fucking saw it. <laughs> I forgot about that. Remember the whole, yes. is it candy? Yes. This is a whole, it's American ripoff. Is it, this is it cake. Yes. Dude, that is what it is. It's literally, you look at all this shit, and it's like, which one's cake? Yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was going to be like a baking competition or something. No, 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 no. They've already had it done. And they're they're they just make you stand back and like, what do you think? Which one of those is cake? <laughs> what do you think is cake? And you watch some ASMR Mikey Day knife action. He gave that idiot a samurai sword. <laughs> oh my gosh! This is the thing is it's it really makes you think we're living in idiocracy. Uh huh. Like uh huh. We we laugh at Japanese game shows. They're laughing at us. Oh right man, it, it is. I'm waiting for Ow my balls. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> This is so close. This, to no, that. I think I think idiot like the the is it kicker is it candy at least is like a dumb entertainment that actually has skill behind it because a baker needs to like fucking yeah make yeah. A, yeah. like so, there's some real skill going on here. But we are one step away from rock paper scissors the fucking game show. <laughs> Do you guys yeah. remember Thirty Rock's Gold Case? I feel like this is a step on the road to Gold Case. It's homonym. <laughs> Hominin. No, it's, nope, the, it's other the other one. one. Les, I think you need to come back with your Bulldogs or Benjamins I'm idea. I'm seriously, Pit Bills. I think LA might be ready for it. <laughs> I'm just saying, there is so much on TV right now that feels like it's a 30 Rock sketch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And I'm not mad at all of it. Netflix releases like joke titles, uh, and you don't even know like what you can click on anymore that's a real movie or not. <laughs> Like, I, I swear to God, if Netflix puts out a show called, like, Horror Island, I'm going to believe that that's real. I think that's possible. <laughs> T- like, t- the 2020s oh. is going to be for TV, what the, tw- what the 20 teens was for The Onion. Right. Yeah, yeah where it's like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what we do anymore. It's like, the world has gotten too ridiculous. Yeah. I, we, can't yeah. Make, we can't make up funny shows anymore. Every time we do it, they make <laughs> one that's dumber than what we made up. <laughs> it's like Batman and Joker. Like, at this point, we're scared to to put the costume on for fear of what y'all will do <laughs> escalation yeah i think the algorithms write in shows now they're like oh <laughs> cake videos are popular on youtube <laughs> here we oh, go man there was a mr show sketch years ago about coupon the movie it was the most most used coupon in america the week before so it's the most popular thing in the newspaper the week before and they decide to make a movie of it because it's a really popular coupon <laughs> and no one goes to see it and the movie studios sue America for misleading them. <laughs> and all of America is legally uh, obligated to go see Coupon the movie. <laughs> I fucking love Mr. Show. <laughs> is, is Mr. Show, they, they already had a revival, right? Or they have another revival? Oh, yeah, no, they they came back you, and did with Bob and David. You get you guys saw that Kids in the Hall is, is coming back, right? Yes. The old men oh, in the wow. hall. Oh, wow. Yes, the, the elderly uh, in the hall. Elderly in the hall. <laughs> everything, everything gets a reboot, um, or or a revival. Mm-hmm. Maybe they should call it "Why Are You Out of Your Room." <laughs> so, um, my TV diaries. I uh, kept up with. I'm still rewatching season seven of Seinfeld, which really holds up for me. Uh, I'm finding it very funny. I'm making my way through Brooklyn Nine Nine season six. Watch a few more episodes of that. Um, Watch the Mummy on a weird. <laughs> I was like looking for someone to watch as I was I was going to sleep, and I'm like, ah, oh, the Mummy's on HBO, and click that on and watch that. That, that is so a good. watchable fucking movie. Oh, it's, it's so good. So John good. Hanna. I mean, everybody in it's great. Everybody, in it's great. And you forget like the Americans. Their whole bit was really like. Do you forget those guys are even in it because of so much about Evie and uh, Rick? Well, because and the Brendan leads. Fraser out Americans them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, he does. Their whole bit is to be obnoxious Americans and uh, uh, and fucking. <laughs> Brendan Fraser is just the most America fuck yeah Indiana Jones type that he just yep. overshadows all of them. Yeah. Look, I love when Brendan Fraser holds up the cat. He just he's like, "Hey, looky here." Look what I got. He's using a cat. <laughs> he's using a cat as a weapon against the mummy and that's amazing. It does take down the threat factor of your giant monster when yeah. he yeah. get out with a cat. Yeah. Yep. Have you seen the clean plate for the CG like the sword fighting scene with the skeletons? No. Uh-uh. Where it's him but the skeletons are gone? Huh. It is. It's like he's doing a dance because yeah. I don't know if you remember the scene, but he's like yeah. spinning around yeah. the table no, and stuff. I mm-hmm. yeah. Nobody. They didn't have any tennis balls for yeah. him. Nobody's it's there. A pretty good fight scene. It's actually pretty yeah. good. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, they just added all that just wow. on I top mean, of it. I mean, the CG hasn't aged great, but the choreography for that fight in Brendan Fraser doing it is actually you know pretty what? good. You know what, though? The CGI, I mean, the CGI for Mummy holds up better than the, the CGI for Mummy 3 Scorpion King. Like, if you're talking CGI, mm -hmm. like, their stuff is that's solid mummy, enough. That's Mummy Returns Scorpion King. Mummy 3 is the Dragon Emperor. No, no, no. Mummy Returns doesn't have Scorpion King yet, does it? Does it I really? I think that's M Mummy 2. Uh, mummy Returns King. has Scorpion King at the end of it, and then yes. The Rock oh, got his own right. spinoff when we was Scorpion that's King. That's right. And that then those have five sequels. sequels. Oh, Jesus. Again, I'm surprisingly single. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I bought, in order to watch the commentary track, which is totally worth buying, by the way, I bought the <laughs> Blu-ray set that was like 10 bucks to get The Mummy, The Mummy Returns, and The Mummy Dragon Emperor. To this day, I've not seen the Mummy Dragon Emperor, <laughs> but That's a it's good another choice. Mummy movie. With but it's got Rachel Weiss and Brendan Fraser in it, right? Like it's got to at least have. Some I don't think they get the Rachel Weiss does? back for the third one. No, I'm pretty oh, sure they, they not? replace the actor, the actress. Oh, yeah. that's not great. But Brendan Fraser's in it, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. so at least there'll be something worth watching in there. But I don't know. I <laughs> I haven't rushed to watch it, and I've had it for six months or so. I feel I feel a mummy marathon. I think Brendan Fraser can have a whole separate career of just near like just commentating on other movies. Yes, oh, uh, man. selling commentary mm -hmm. tracks of Brendan. Brendan Fraser watches Schindler's List. I'm in it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm doing? Let's do this. It's the only way you'll get me to watch Requiem for a Dream again. <laughs> I say he does workout DVDs, and we get hot Brendan Fraser back. <laughs> <laughs> so I also uh, I watched an episode of The Minx. Uh, which I'm, I'm really, I'm really digging Minx on HBO. It's, it's, it's war I'm warming up to it. I still think they have a protagonist problem in that she is really just kind of awful and dumb in some ways. And I'm just like, you are, you are not liked, and and no one likes you, and they shouldn't <laughs> like you. And right. and I want her to be more likable because I, I think she's a good person. You can't be rooting so for the people grating. that are rude and mean to her. Yeah. Yeah, it would be cool to find out that J the Jake Johnson character is like hardcore using her to just fill out this magazine and make some. some no, dough. he seems like a nice dude. Yeah, like, no, he's the good he guy. He does seem yeah. like a nice. Yeah, dude. so like, so far it just kind of seems he knows what's going on. Like she thinks less of all of them, and they are more capable than her at almost yes. every turn. Everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and she's slowly coming around, but it's it's a slow progression. I wish it was faster. But I love everything else about the show. Uh, watched the latest episode of Picard which I am super loving. They referenced an old Star Trek TOS episode that I only know about because my buddy does text track and he told me about it. Uh, mm -hmm. But that was kind of cool. I also, uh, I straight up love that basically ICE is just the bad guys. Like they're not doing any metaphor or shit. Like literally the guys from Starfleet came back and they, uh, they emp blast us an ice bus, knock out the racist guard, and let all the people go. I love that Ice is the bad guy in Star Trek, because I know it pisses people off. <laughs> it's still Ted Cruz's favorite show. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do like, oh, why do they put politics in Star Trek? I'm like, you mean the place that started no. off as a fucking ut progressive utopia, and that's yep. how they picture yep. the just future? Like, cue, yep. cue all the people that are freaked out that Rage Against the Machine is political. They don't use fucking money in the future. What are you talking about? Like, there's no <laughs> yeah. capitalism. Like, did, have you watched any Star Trek bit of any of the Star Trek thing? <laughs> any of them. Yeah. I watched the latest Atlanta, which uh, I am loving Atlanta this season. I'm so glad to have it back. The, yeah. uh, the bit where they go to, like, a millionaire's mansion was just fucking all hysterical. I watched the latest Severance, which they're starting to do the sort of the big heisty episode. Mm -hmm. And got to a like cliffhanger ending where I'm like, "Fuck you!" Where's my next episode? <laughs> like I, I was ready. They're gonna end the season. Is this gonna get a season two? They already announced season two. Yep, which makes me nervous because this and from are like, yeah, gonna piss they, me off. Yep, yep. That's when they fuck up that season finale. Yep, <laughs> yep. Oh. That's that's what I'm worried about. Yeah, you won't that's... remember it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem. Any Nick is gonna be super pissed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's one version of you that's only seen like the shitty finales of shows you don't remember, and then there's one of you that's like, I don't know how, but I just don't remember any of the season finales of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that would be the best if you never remember the shitty, disappointing endings of all these shows that have so much. Dude, potential. I would still love Game. Any Nick would still love Game of Thrones. What do you mean the sixth episode of season three of that? There's no such episode. <laughs> Look, I, even having watched all of Severance, I would sign up for a Severance procedure if it could get me that. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, fuck my what you only, only the watch bad is bad All the, TV and can't the dark remember the implications good TV? of what more like of, of condemning some version of me to an internal torture you could still like game of thrones again fuck that guy get him in there it's, look 
Fuck any, <laughs> Ran- fuck any Randy. What's he ever done for me? This movie yeah, had a seventy him. million dollar opening weekend, and then all of America forgot they saw it and went again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, yep. We just we premiered it twice in a row. Actually, I'd pay for that. Go see Spider Man. Get to pay, forget oh, it, yeah. and go see it again. Well, unless you had to pay for the premium cap package to keep your memories, right? Yeah. No, do you pay to saw that? You you paid to see the movie, not remember it. If I could see Avengers Endgame for the first time over and over again, it would be like fucking heroin. That's all I would do is watch Avengers Endgame every day. <laughs> like a Strange day. Days kind of thing. That is it. Every day I would watch <laughs> Avengers Endgame. Randy in an empty warehouse with a VR helmet. <laughs> and I would feel happier than I have felt since 2014. The only It's the only time someone intentionally Groundhog Days themselves. <laughs> yeah. Like you wake up and you're like, wait, Endgame's out? <laughs> Speaking of kids yeah, in the hall day. earlier, it'd be like a brain candy moment brain of like, candy, yeah, yeah. it's a time heist. It's Look, I, I realize it's this is problematic, heist. but I would absolutely watch it. If I could if I could sign up to the one version of me only sees Avengers Endgame every day as a brand new experience. I don't care what that does to any Randy. Fuck him. I will trade, <laughs> There's a genie I will trade. that's like not world peace, not hunger, nothing. OK, it's going to be rough with your kids of like at the at the when they turn 30 and it's like, oh, yeah. Hey, dad, you still you remember me anymore? Like, no, st- still. <laughs> Nah, I'm still watching Endgame, so... Any Randy's but... problem. That's all any Randy, any Randy's problem. Audi Randy is the happiest he's ever been. Every day. <laughs> I'm sure your childhood was great. I don't care. <laughs> uh, nobody plays this for my kids. Um... <laughs> oh, shit. My kid listens to this podcast sometimes. Uh, hey, Ross, just kidding. Just kidding. Right. would never do it. Uh, no, my kid, my kid would sign up for that in the same, the same heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. I'm not yeah. sure. It wouldn't be Avengers Endgame, but there's something they would do the same thing for. And they'd be like, yeah, sorry, dad. Fuck you. I do wish my, my, my dad would keep some insults recorded so I could just take them straight to my therapist. That would save time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what podcasting is. <laughs> All right. That wraps up our TV diaries for the week. And it is time. It is the first, the first podcast of the month. It's time for the power ranking. <laughs> Power. Rankings. Thank you, thank you, guys. Kyle, you, Kyle, you you didn't do your own theme music. I'm shocked. <laughs> I've been trying to like wean myself off. Of I know, I know, and I'm, I'm impressed. But I also had to call it out because you always do your own theme music. Even yeah, we got theme despite music. there being theme music. <laughs> no, I uh, I almost did my own theme music for TV Diaries, but instead I do like these weird hand gestures. I don't know if you guys see it, where it's like me simulating what the music was. I'm, I'm a weird person. I, uh, <laughs> Kyle's liturgical I dance. To the- <laughs> yeah, there's a reason we don't video stream this thing, because y'all would stop mm. watching us. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I did get into a, a conversation with uh, Martin a couple weeks ago about people recognizing you from what you do. Yeah. And I was like, it's only happened once, and it was a complete stranger, and it freaked me out. <laughs> and he was like, well, you better quit TV, dudes. And I was like, you might think we're a little more successful than we actually are. <laughs> That's right. Nobody recognizes from TV dudes. I've had that happen one time at an ATX fest where the person <laughs> sitting next to was like, oh my God, you're on that. Pod. I was like, are you fucking with me? <laughs> How would you? <laughs> I had that happen to me at ATX TV fest, but they thought we were the Gilmore guys. I'll, I'll take it. They, they heard TV dudes and they're like, oh yeah, I've heard of that. And I'm like, no, you haven't. And I realized they were talking with the Gilmore guys. And I'm like, yeah. See, I only got recognized at a convention for someone congratulating me on playing the mutant that burns in the sun in Logan. <laughs> you were great in that, that, though. Beware the light. That was great. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah. I love Stephen Merchant, but that guy from Barry would have been so awesome in that, uh, in that role. Oh, yes, uh, yes. Uh Oh, that, Zaz. Anthony the, the... Zaz. Yeah. Oh. But guys, I'm excited uh, to return once again with uh, my analysis of the internet. Your analysis now, because uh, power rankings moving forward. Kyle, I'm, sorry to, I'm sorry to interrupt, but oh, you, you got to not call it your analysis. <laughs> <laughs> or at least enunciate better. <laughs> your analysis. Uh Hey, fuck you. No, man. Enunciate, and that's for chumps. <laughs> we we have a new bottom show. I'm too excited to uh to enunciate. <laughs> do we want to start with where do we want to start? Uh, top let's, or the bottom? Let's start at the bottom. Just like uh oh, that what could be this said. bottom show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's worse than Naomi? <laughs> Guys, before I mention what this show is, I mentioned this show to another person. Mm-hmm. I won't say I won't out him. I won't dox him. 
<laughs> but he was like, oh, yeah, I love that show. It was so funny. I actually read the script a few years ago. I'm like, Kyle, I need to know who that person is so I can't be friends with them anymore. Dude. <laughs> no, I, uh, well, and then they claimed, uh, they were like, well, I don't, I don't get letter, Kenny. I'm, I'm one of those people. I was like, dude, no. Because I'm talking about Welcome to Flatch. Yep. Uh, over on Fox, which uh, we all watched it via Hulu. But uh, I don't know. I feel like just fo- sometimes Fox doesn't try. They got some hits. They do some good stuff. Yeah. Sometimes. sometimes? <laughs> yeah. What is your definition of effort? Well, they knocked out. They uh, they knocked Brooklyn Nine Nine out of the park all the way to NBC. To another fucking service. Yeah. <laughs> another goddamn channel. Fox has another one on the bottom, bottom five. I'm just saying. So yeah, does Fox have anything good right Fox now? Fox is a network FX? despite itself. <laughs> <laughs> ABC's like, come on, man, you really aren't doing yourself any favors. <laughs> um, the uh. Second to bottom on our list, I guess, yeah, I guess it's kind of reverse order because we usually do like five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. This is literally like starting with one. But uh, what, real quick, Welcome to Flash, I believe, is the only show that we have come to a score consensus on. <laughs> oh, we <laughs> all get it one. We, we all oh, knew that so it is so far the worst thing we've that's, watched this it year. Is, it is. <laughs> it surpassed the other two worst things I've watched easily. I'm just curious to see if there's anything else we agree on. I would I would have given it an extra point if it had not started with the white text against a barn. I'd have been like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck yourself. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, you can't you can't compare yourself to Letterkenny that hard and then fuck up that bad. You want to be compared to Letterkenny? Okay, let's do this. <laughs> Why would you want to be compared to Letterkenny? That's like setting yeah. yourself up for failure. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> like that's the only thing Shorzy has going against it is that. It has to be at least as good as Letter Kenny. Now, nah, for me, now it's just got to be better than Welcome to Flash. Right. Actually, that's a good point. Please, <laughs> better. Than oh Welcome man, to did uh, did they take up like like a collection plate around the Letter Kenny set and like fund Welcome to Flash just to change the bar? <laughs> is this a is this a, a false flag? <laughs> oh, uh, the second to bottom on our list is uh, Naomi over on the CW. Uh, the comic book show about the girl who likes comic books, I guess. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Her superpower is interest. Yeah, no. Not not that great. Nope. What, we got it, uh, like a 2.1 on our list. The mm-hmm. internet average is a 7.1. I don't understand the internet. I don't understand it. Looking at some of these numbers, Welcome to Flash outranks like five shows on our list, and it's People not are better wrong. than any yeah, of them. Yeah. You know, it's just as simple as that. They have broken glass in their souls. <laughs> Uh, third, third last, uh, how I met your father. Um, I don't know. I didn't think this was like offensive, but yeah, you guys hated this show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cal, you're dragging it up there, but, uh, we're trying our best. Oh, the internet it loves the it. Yep. The internet loves it. Um, but yeah, that's a, uh, we got, uh, two and a quarter on that one, but yeah, 7.7 7 internet average. Uh, number 40 again. I mean, these aren't great shows, but life and Beth, uh, Amy Schumer over on Hulu. N- not doing too great. Two point eight. <laughs> wow, I can see my misfire. my rating. My rating is the highest of the four of us, and I hated that show. She That's... should have thrown in that uh, Alec Baldwin shotgun joke. That oh been... God! Oh yeah, oh, 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 oh. couldn't yeah. hurt. She's man, she, yeah. She's talking about being offended about Will Smith, and I'm like, you were gonna tell that joke? Someone would have slapped you, and you would have deserved it. Yeah, that 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 story is depressing. Number five on the bottom, a show I actually kind of like but i guess i haven't been watching it so do i really like it Uh uh-huh uh again over on fox uh pivoting uh my favorite cast in not the best show ever but yeah (laughs) bottom of the barrel for us 3.8 internet average 6.18 uh yeah that's not great (laughs) no it's not good um you guys want to talk about some good shows yeah let's talk about some good shows also real quick i have a feeling once you guys watch our flag means death that one might move a little higher on the list. Yeah, yeah. But there was part of me that was thinking, like, how funny would it have been if Taika Waititi watched Tiger King last year and saw Joe Exotic and was like, <laughs> I don't want this to be the only gay pirate story on TV. <laughs> 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 like, I could do a much better gay pirate story. What's weird is that I can see Taika Waititi saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I pictured in his voice. Yeah. Hey, man. Oh, man. If only. They're not going to be the only p- gay pirate, man. 
<laughs> Sorry, that's more Korg. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the Korg one's pretty easy to do. Oh, new day, new day. Should we do top ten or should we do just the uh, top five? Five. Let's uh, do top five. Yeah, let's do top five. Okay. Um, just real quick, honorable mention. Uh, Moon Knight. Okay, we just said top five, five, but whatever. <laughs> 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 we are forty minutes into this fucking thing, but what? <laughs> honorable mention. No, I just think it's interesting that it's not in our top ten. Not yet. Not yet. Maybe moving up. Number five, season four, Cobra Kai. Great average on our end, 8.85. And then internet average is 8.5, so not far off. Uh, We got it just a little bit higher than that. Um, Holy shit. We have a new number four. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. It's uh, Bust Down over on Peacock. Yep, yep. 8.87 for our average. The internet average is 7.7. Dude, I don't think I I laughed real hard at that. I, oh, man. I love it. Much as I love it, I don't think I've watched all of it. I think I have a couple episodes to watch. Oh, man, it's Dude, all you great. Get, I, the yeah, last I'll episode, with the way it. it finishes, you get, oh, it's so dark and hilarious. Yeah, I, need, I just I just forgot about it. I, I it's, It slipped off my queue. I need to finish watching it. Oh, no, man, you can't I'm kill yourself. That. You're not You're not getting away from me that easily. <laughs> you, <laughs> I'm in your life. It's so fucking dark, man. <laughs> I love it. Number three, the after party on Apple Plus. Yeah. DVD's average of nine point one three, really one two five. Dude, a lot of good comedies already in the year. Yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, yeah, no. And I'm even looking at some of the stuff. It's that good, but top five. you know, is it as good as How I Met Your Father, though? Because <laughs> <laughs> the internet says it's not. The internet that's says the, it's that's not. the real mystery. Yeah, yeah. I wish yeah, you put know, Tiffany Haddish on solving that. Ways. I wish I could figure out a way to uh, include the number of reviews because everything has the same average, whether it was three people who reviewed it or like 300 people who reviewed yeah, it. It's yeah, it's like looking on Amazon at like, wow, this one's got five stars. Oh, three people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll tell you something that definitely has five stars. Actually, it has 9.3125 stars, and that's Atlanta on fx fx on hulu um the internet average is 9.1 and we have it just slightly higher than that yeah but yeah i'm two in really excited to watch the third and this is just one of my favorite shows every season you know I mean, you know how our friends some of our friends have some weird tv tastes like former tv dude johnny, johnny neal uh our good buddy martin they were talking about atlanta on on johnny's feed and it was sort of like johnny's like they're trolling us right and martin was into it i'm like what show are you guys watching? Everyone loves Atlanta. What are you talking about? Man, Do they mean the current yeah. season or just Atlanta in general? But no, the current season. They were not digging it. I don't. I don't see how it's majorly different. It's. I don't the either. Show's always yeah, done yeah. what it fucking wanted. The first season. Yeah. 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 The first season. The first season. Then the first episode. Of the second episode ends with an invisible car. Yeah, so it's like the second yes. episode. Like, yeah. like it is. You should know what you're in with Atlanta at this point. It's I watch that gif odd. all the time. Fucking Teddy Perkins. I could yeah. see where somebody might have been thrown off by the the standalone first episode, and that was like really intentional. They talked, or I think Donald Glover talked about it on some talk show, but he said, "Yeah, we just really wanted to fuck with people because we hadn't been on for so long. We had to do, we couldn't just come back with an episode. We had to come back, you know, with something something big. weird." Yeah. And as far as standalones go, I love that. It sets the season tone to me, like in an important way. I think. Louis used to do a lot of good standalones. I mean, for what it's worth, uh, this kind of felt like the feeling I got back. Why did I mention his name? Damn it! You mean you mean Grammy winner Louis C.K.? Yes. <laughs> Can- canceled Grammy winner Louis C.K. Man, cancellation is so hard there's on comedians. No, there's no Grammy thing. winner. Yeah, he yeah he won, won this a Grammy year. this year. Wait, this, this year? year? This year? He yes, won this he year. just won a Grammy for an album. Wow. Remember how the week before we were talking about how comedy is so hard and it's unbelievable people are getting a punch in comedians and then the guy who whipped his dick out at a bunch of people won the grant won the grammy i feel like we need to be punching more comedians wow it's it's real hard to be a comedian nowadays i'll tell you what fuck yeah you can if you whip your dick out you gotta wait five years for your grammy you know nick schwartzen used to have a joke in his bit about how he would like whip his dick out at parties and put it over his wrist and then ask women what time it was he couldn't read his watch uh and I'm like, that's pretty much the same thing Louis C.K. did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, except even somehow worse, <laughs> Kyle. And I didn't even, yeah. I didn't know that fact. And now I do. 
about him. <laughs> hey, if, if we don't get talking about Nick Schwartz's penis on the power ranking, no one then, should be talking about even that here? ever. <laughs> what are we even here? <laughs> I don't want to talk about Nick Schwartz and much less his junk. So I guess the answer to the question, do you really want to taste it? Uh, w- would probably be a no. <laughs> <sighs> That's a no. Kyle, Kyle, I am trying to get through this without interrupting you too much, but you gotta stop teeing them up like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you want to taste it? Because our number one show is Peacemaker on HBO Max yep. with a 9.75 uh, TV Dudes average and then an 8.2 internet average. So obviously they're way off with yeah. that. Yep. Uh, it shows flawless and yeah. Yeah, pretty much. It, yeah. I actually, it feels right to me in terms of like when I look at our scores and stuff, like this isn't my favorite show for the year, but I could see where like collectively this could be our favorite yeah. show for the year. Yeah, I think that's very likely. Yeah. I can't think of a thing they could do to improve it on that season. Like the only thing I want is more. I was going to say two words yeah. more eagerly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys hear the <laughs> HBO Max news? They just dropped like three of their uh, creative people that have been kind of uh, programming the kind of the newer HBO Max stuff. Hmm. Uh, and this is like the Discovery deal is about to go through. So it's going to be like whole new people. I'm like, don't fuck up Peacemaker. Yeah, man. Like, I just they take don't the fuck win up. on they, that one. Yeah. They finally started to be getting to, to do some stuff that's good. I, I don't want to fuck up now. Yeah. Good luck, uh, HBO Max and Sex. <laughs> That's the power rankings. All right. Well, it's a good time to remind you that you can uh, go over to patreon.com slash TV dudes, throw us in a bucket episode. In exchange, we get to keep up our streaming services, pay for our hosting costs, and you get bonus content each week. This week, oh, this week, people, we begin a new movie project called The Cage Match. We'll yes. explain it more in the Patreon episode, but if you were thinking it has something to do with Nicolas Cage, you'd be right. <laughs> also get on my brain we also have our $20 show level so if there are shows you want us to throw into the rotation you can buy it at that level give us a couple of ideas don't have to be anime she clearly does not doesn't have to be anime <laughs> doesn't have to be game shows you don't have to make us watch uh whatever show about thick about cake although apparently i'm the only <laughs> one who hasn't watched that show so you <laughs> might as well but oh, uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> this time next week randy you're going to be so into whether it's cake or not I really am not, I promise. <laughs> but what if it's cake? <laughs> what if Actually, I that would cake. be Randy, some of the cakes are a lie. <laughs> and then you can eat the cake when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about Halo, uh, which I'm curious. To, I, I'm really curious to see how you guys came down to this because I have played maybe five minutes of Halo in my entire life. I have no attachment to this at all. Same. None. Um, not a minute. Nick, any Halo love? Any Halo interest? Uh, I, I, I PlayStation guy. I never owned an Xbox. Uh, so okay, I only, so yeah. I, I think the only time I did play it a couple times when we were supposed to be working overnight at our high school and improving it, but instead we hooked up an Xbox to the overhead projector in the theater screen and played Halo <laughs> up until two o'clock in the morning instead. <laughs> so you nice. have the most Halo experience. So yes. out of all the four of us, I have played it. So yes. You have more Halo experience than the three of us combined. Mm-hmm. Uh, that said, I, I was not like excited for this. It looked very pretty and expensive, but I was like, this military sci-fi thing, I have this feeling it's based on a video game. I think it's going to be like, kind of lunk-headed. Video game adaptations traditionally don't do so well. After two episodes, I'm super into it, guys. I'm actually really enjoying it. Huh. I'm actually uh, shocked to hear you say that. Yeah, I, uh, I'm a little surprised myself. You tend to be a little more... Uh critical of your tv so there's there's sometimes i'm watching a show and i'm like oh yeah they just lost randy (laughs) (laughs) oh no not enough here like (laughs) gonna have to hear this but i I personally and granted i haven't seen the second episode yet um but i found like everything the look of it all to be like really gorgeous Mm -hmm. um and i feel like the design of that game is really great i mean i've been seeing it on mountain dew cans for years uh (laughs) The uh, like this is this is a really neat property and um, like a lot of cool stuff. But gosh, if this isn't just like pretty basic storytelling, <laughs> oh, like, it is, it is, yeah, n- nothing too too original here. I mean, n- they're not doing a bad job. It's just like this is definitely not something you come to for like a really original story. I think I will say this: I think they open it up quite a bit in the second episode. Ooh, That's why wow. I was worried about making that comment. Uh... <laughs> Uh, well, I'll go first, unless you can rip in a new asshole after I go. Uh, 
Randy, I very strongly disagree. I liked the first episode very much. Uh-huh. I thought like, okay, this the they're spending a lot of money. The, the action scene in the beginning is very good. Reminds me of why it's a good idea to have a character that's fully armored so that it's seamless with the stunt coordinators and the CG. And like, right. oh, that's that's really smart and good for action sequences. And they used it there to their advantage. Um, they also kill the fuck out of those kids in the beginning. <laughs> Extra star. And that first kid's head just pops. Blows <laughs> right off. Yeah. Oh my you God. kids are taking acid in the woods. I <laughs> should have known that was gonna that gets extra nick points. That's I it's like it's like putting time travel in a show for less. Right. Yeah, it was I was like, you <laughs> son of a bitch, I'm in. <laughs> the, and then uh they do the the they pull the helmet off in a key moment, and I was like, okay, yeah, I understand the moment here to go forward yeah. with it. Uh yeah. I still think that they've given up the like mystique of leaving the helmet on like Mandalorian does then seeing his face is all the more important when you do but I understand why they did yeah and then the second episode I fell asleep really oh god I was so excited I was like oh thank god after foundation and all these other boring fucking sci-fi shows that take forever to go this show just starts with blowing a kid's head off and we are just fighting (laughs) aliens and then the second episode has fucking nothing going on wait a minute wait a minute you say fucking nothing do you mean they didn't kill any kids in the second episode is that your complaint they didn't kill anyone in the second episode (laughs) (laughs) no one dies but the second episode has bokeen woodbine as an ex-spartan running a firefly market i loved that shit but how does halo go an episode without killing people (laughs) i thought i thought that was kind of interesting and i was surprised how the the universal soldier of it all of like the yeah, humans yeah. being experimented on. I've seen that a lot, but I still thought it was compelling in this version. I'm like, yeah, I, I feel this. I feel like uh, one of them is kind of still a fucked. Like he's only not so fucked up compared to master chief who went spent the whole time in that uh, yeah, yeah. place. And the f- covenant, is that what the aliens are? Yeah. The, the covenant. Yeah. yeah. They are fucking snoozes. <laughs> it, it is it is true it's like it's it's kind of like when we would cut over um klingons God, i know there's a show that does this it's this the klingons the, yeah this is it's klingons, klingons and star trek discovery yeah. of like yeah. where they speak in that dumb language with clicks and talk yep. about religion and it's like how is this the most boring fucking part of the show yeah i will admit i didn't read a single subtitle when they were on the screen yeah don't make <laughs> it doesn't me watch, matter don't, don't don't make me pay full attention to your tv show and read and read if it's not going to be more interesting than that, I I 100% agree with you on that. They even did the thing where one of them is human, like the Klingon did in fucking Discovery. Like I, I, but that reminded me of like Stargate with the weird like freaky child human who was like actually the alien, and yeah. I liked that. Like, don't get me wrong, I am not saying this is in any way original. This is a, a pastiche well, of a billion other. It's it's Firefly. It's space above and beyond. It wasn't very it's, original when it came out. So, but yeah, the the, the so. I thought the focus would have been on Master Chief, which I thought was the most noticeable character and the most uh, interesting part of the actual show, honestly enough. Yeah. Uh, even Can though I... he's a symbol in a cipher, watching him, what be- what they had to do to make him one, I'm like, oh, that's an interesting take on it. Uh, the f- f- fucking, they spend so much time with these, C- and they obviously spend so much money on these aliens for nothing yeah. in those scenes. I'm like, th- this is the most money spent on anything i've seen that just sparks no interest in me whatsoever would you have liked it better if they were puppets yes <laughs> are you are you asking me if i would watch hate if i would watch master chief blow up farscape characters then yes i would watch that very much so <laughs> no i'm saying i think i know how to pitch halo to nick and that is muppet aliens and more kids getting killed. But even but even then, I wouldn't want to watch them talk about religion from uh, or whatever the fuck these I, this MacGuffin is. I get is. that. That that's fair. I I don't know. I guess the stuff that works for me really works. Like the the whole the firefly of it all of like these guys on the outskirts of this. I like that the Marines aren't the good guys. The Marines are fucking terrible. <laughs> and oh, yeah, I that's... like that they're that they're giving that that shade of gray. I was I think maybe my low expectations helped here because I expected this was going to be rah rah military killing aliens thing. And I was going to hate it. And instead, there's a little more shade to it. Well, having Master Chief being the one that kills that kid's mom as well as saves her, it was like, okay, that's yeah. interesting. And yeah, because he just follows orders and uh, 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 is only now questioning anything. But yeah. uh, I also thought that 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 young girl, uh, 
when she freaks out and says like i'm gonna tell i'm gonna lie on national tv and tell everyone this i'm like okay i don't think you're getting this they're not exactly asking you <laughs> the military mm-hmm. complex here that's saying they want you to cooperate is saying that they're you, hey if you want to live you can do this for us that's yeah that's, that's not yeah. really what this is not a negotiation happening and she asks for an independence for a whole planet and i'm like yeah. What 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 do you think is happening here? <laughs> like, <laughs> and then they yeah. she's shocked when they asked a killer later. I'm like, yeah, they're like fucking they're one step away from the empire. What do you think was going to happen? Uh, I think I'm going to blow your mind uh with the CG here because for how gorgeous this looks, mm-hmm. they made not not necessarily a rookie mistake, but they really showed where the limits of CG are. In the opening sequence where the uh, Halo guys first jump in, mm-hmm. what happens is these suits all look completely like the actual suit dudes wearing. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not sure the, the combination, like what's CG and what's not, but there are scenes when the characters start moving where even though the suit looks completely perfect, the animation of how they're running looks like something stock, like maybe... They actually got somebody running in a mocap suit, but now it's like a giant character in armor. So it doesn't it look oh, realistic. Having I thought that was kind of the thing is that they're move. like cybernetic suits and they move kind of like robots. I thought that was part of the gimmick. Kind of like in that G.I. Joe movie. <laughs> like, I, yeah, it's funny. I don't notice bad C- CGI in general. It has to be really bad for me to notice. Uh, but I've, I've definitely seen people talking about like the CGI and the Spartans didn't look great. I feel like visually it looks good, but I do think that, and maybe that's what they're trying to do, Nick, is it's like the suits move like that to be, because they jump high. I'm not familiar with the video game. I'm not sure if they're supposed to move like that or not. Maybe they're supposed to be more fluid or or something, and it was a mistake. It almost seems like if they are doing animations where either it's a guy in a mocap suit or they're physically like animating something, it almost seems like they need to fudge it a little bit maybe make it more stylized just so either it looks more realistic or looks more intentionally like the suit that's like pushing people around and like giving them abilities. Well, also you can definitely tell that master chief's physical abilities are linked to his helmet. Cause he can't do as much cool stuff with the helmet off. <laughs> Cause that the, his, his head would look weird bobbing along on this thing. So you can always <laughs> tell when they're about to do a cool action sequence versus a kind of smaller one. Yeah, I, I I gotta say I think I like this more than more than you guys, but I think also part of it is I think all the cast like Pablo Schreiber I think is is doing a great job as Master Chief. I like the girl. Uh, I don't remember her name. Kami. I I I love Natasha. Right. Natasha Mecklehone is playing the sort of like the head of the Master the Spartan program. She looks so hot in this. I really I really liked him. I uh, I really like Natasha Mecklehone in the role she's playing. I love seeing Bokeem Woodbine. I, I always loved that dude, and I think he was really good here. So oh, there's yeah. there's there's enough good cast doing good work. Um, I can't disagree with you. The alien stuff is is not where it should be, but in general, I I I'm really digging this. I'm definitely going to keep watching it. It's it's actually something I look forward to. Like just like Picard drops and Halo drops, and I try to watch both of them. So uh, right. I I'm yeah. I'm actually digging well, it. To it be fair, like I've only the seen one. the I liked the first episode quite a bit, and the second episode was a real disappointment. And that's just I don't know if that's just them winding down after a big first episode, and we're yeah. just getting into the rhythm of things. So it's hard to like yeah. get a feel for the, what the rest of the show is going to be like. But the second right, the second right. episode makes me think it's going to be really self serious and plotty, and I'm not into it. I can see that. I I I I guess I liked the second episode, and I thought they sort of expanded out what they're going to be doing with it. But you're right. There, I don't know where they're going with it. I hope they're going somewhere I'm interested in. Anyway, Les, what, did, Les, you what did you think of this video game property? Oh, I tuned out for a bit there. Are we still talking about the video game thing? <laughs> That's how much I cared about this show. Um, it's fine. I'm watching cutscenes of a video game a roommate I don't have is playing, <laughs> and uh, and I don't understand. I don't know why. Um, you sent this me is also very many texts for that one, this, sir. This, uh, just today. <laughs> like, yeah. That's, yeah, that... the my my main feeling from the first episode was this is still happening. Uh, <laughs> and I like I I had a moment of like, oh cool, it's oh fuck, that's the credits. We're in the opening credits. Oh <laughs> shit. <laughs> my inner Randy watched the first episode of this and my inner Les watched the second episode, I think. <laughs> yeah, I all of it like uh, yes, the suit blends with all of the CG, but all of the aliens and everything look puffy and 
uh, get shot a certain number of times. But like, it feels like a video game to me. And I don't want to play a video game and, and don't care about it. Also, the storytelling of it, I feel like it's an old enough video game that these things were amalgams of IP they couldn't afford then. So like Ooh. this is this is a half baked Universal Soldier. There is a little bit of why the last man of this is ten years too goddamn late. And and on. part of it yeah. is like this is a this is a book you translated into another language and back like like this already cribbed from shit I've already seen. I and now when <laughs> District Nine was came out and that was supposed to be the Halo movie. Well now they're making oh, this into was, a show yeah. and I'm like I'm supposed to watch it and not go so it's Universal Soldier. Or so it's it, like, I feel like I've seen this before, but I have, it. I don't know. This, this feels like a, a mush of stuff. I don't know. Th this is, it doesn't work for me at all. Um, I, I don't think I could care less about a property. But, but less. What if it had Muppets and kids being killed and time travel? Maybe. I would, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I still, it's not, and, it, and there's, and British it's not people, being British done, people. it's not being done bad i hate that kid's haircut i really wish that at least one laser had just like not killed the main kid but like clipped her and just taken most of that haircut off because it's fucking stupid looking like why do people in the future have to look like die antwerp or die antwerp i'm just a little sick of my favorite fantasy and sci-fi stuff being animated show cartoon shows of like lower decks and vox machina are my favorite versions of fantasy and sci-fi and they're really <laughs> making fun of it like uh, foundation uh, uh cowboy bebop was like this like i'm like i i want one of, i feel like i like less you said that the media is trying to convincing you you don't like fantasy for the last like five years <laughs> like i would swear <laughs> like for me it's the sci-fi thing of like i i'm no i'm pretty sure i like space and lasers i think i think like junior high boy badass Space Merc doesn't work for me anymore. It doesn't matter if it's Warhammer or this or what. It, I just I don't think this is for me now. Um, though I did think it was funny as shit that the Spartans didn't save a soul when they landed. <laughs> Not a person. One person. No. One it, person. Yeah. And by accident, by yep. total, they did not know she was alive if she had not yeah, yeah, run no, out. They're just, they're just there to kill. Yeah. Shit. I mean, well, and, and like, like they're there for the hydrogen machinery, protect the pipeline. Yeah. That's it. Yep. it but yep. like, I loved that. Otherwise they could fair. nuke it from or to be fair. They could have nuked it from orbit for all of the good. They, they didn't cut like, <laughs> Oh God, the Spartans are here. These Yay. were enemy combatants. <laughs> not for you. Like they said that the UNC and these guys were fighting. So I was surprised yeah. they showed up at all. Yeah. If it hadn't well, because they weren't there for them. Exactly. They, they and the, the thing pipeline. is, that's what I like about it. I like that they're not presenting the, the UNSC. The easy way to do this would have been the, to do the dumb uh, Spartans are superheroes, the 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 Covenant are, are the bad guys, and instead the Spartans and the and the Marine Corps are like the fucking scourge of the universe, and they're they're terrible. And I like that. I like, and I think that's what a lot of the Halo fans fucking hate. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> that's interesting to me. I. Like more than what I thought it was. I thought it was just going to be a straight up Starship Troopers. Yeah, me too. But mostly it just, I there's, this is this is my like, it's a video game. There's just something in my brain that turns the fuck off. I'm like, it's Halo. Yeah. I don't care. That's like fair. I'm aware that's of fair. what Halo is. It is a giant video game that's been on the side of every uh, extreme Seven Eleven cup in the last like. <laughs> decade or two it's also like nick I and i were talking earlier halo through mountain dew camps. it's kind of a, a strike where the iron is cold i think i'm just very tired of an alien race's whole thing of being around a warrior religion i'm kind of i'm kind of done with that yeah yeah hey can it be about them not looking for some sort of whatever their version of arc of the arc of the covenant is <laughs> 10 years ago we said hello You're fast asleep. Now you're left playing with moves on Halo Reach. Everything else doesn't matter to me. Everything else but you. It's been too long since I played with you, Master Chief. The way you headshot and melee your enemies. And when you capture the flag, it's so easy to see. I'm just so, oh, oh, oh. I'm in love with Halo. Oh. All right. Let's jump over and talk about We Crash, which I expected to hate. I am not a biopic guy. I don't give a shit about venture capitalists. Uh, I don't like Jared Leto. 
And much as I love Anne Hathaway, she's been in very few things I like. Do you guys watch the documentary before this? Or I did not watch the WeWork documentary. Fanny did. And and so she's gotten to do kind of the dropout thing of, of like uh, having yeah. seen, like watching the dropout, having seen the Theranos documentary was a different experience. And mm-hmm. and I think this would be as well. Yeah, this was one where I got to have, I got to double dip. I had watched the documentary. After, after so I, I, I'm i curious how that experience was because I like, I feel like watching the documentary ruined Joe versus Carol. Like if you saw Tiger King, there was oh, no yeah. point watching Joe versus Carol. No, is that, that similar yeah. here? It's funny. Yeah. It's the oh, opposite. Okay. Here. All right. Yeah, it didn't. The documentary yeah. didn't really well, actually, drop out. I'm not sure about here. About the, the difference show, yeah. between WeWork and yeah. Theranos for me, though, is that at, for WeWork has an actual functioning, yeah, uh, proper. Like they're they're actually doing just fine if that crazy fuck at the top hadn't just been insane. Their yeah, idea yeah. isn't terrible. <laughs> no, no the that, idea and, is and, good. and for a while they're doing just fine. Like like yeah. Theranos is lying from the jump. They they fake every test from the but start. But you know yeah. that yeah. this crazy fuck is never gonna enough enough uh, is never gonna be enough for how, him. No. How no, far have y'all all yeah. watched in this? I think there's four I'm, out, I'm, five out. No, there's five. five all, These all are long episodes. I'm I'm only up to. At one point, he. I mean, as things. If you, like Kyle said, if you know where the documentary is, you, you kind of know how these things go. But at one point, he should be out of money and should be like something should yeah. curb him. And then he gets a crazy ass investment. And yeah. and one of the bankers from the earlier investors like, oh, well, that's the worst thing that could happen to that asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> yep. <laughs> it does really make you think like, uh, what can you do with the right amount of bullshit? Yeah. Like the with the right amount of charisma, the right accent, the right like kind of mystery about Apparently, you. Apparently, Tommy Wiseau could sell you some real estate. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I feel like Jared Leto is almost as an actor, kind of like a weird version of this guy as a businessman. So in I real wanted life. to make a point about Jared Leto real quick before we get too deep into this. Jared Leto gets a lot of shit uh, for being a terrible person, and I think the truth is. He's a method actor who plays only terrible people. And I'm like, you know, the thing is, man, if that's what you choose, then you are a terrible person. Like, <laughs> if, you are, if you are so method and you only play creeps and psychos, then you are a shitbag. Like, you are choosing to be a shitbag. And uh, Anne Hathaway famously, she has said somewhere, she's like, yeah, I haven't met Jared I haven't yet. met Jared yet, yeah. Right. Yep. And I'm like, no, you have. Whatever crazy asshole he's playing, that's who he is this week. You've met Jared. Yeah. Jared may have no personality. His personality is, yeah. what? What can, what role can I take that will give me an excuse for bad behavior? He's crazy good in this role Dude. as well. He is. He's, he's fucking yeah, he's playing a psycho. Into, yeah. He's playing a fucking psycho. Yeah. I guess I'm the only one on the other side of this thing of like, and I have to agree with you that the acting is very good and actually everything in the show is good. I think I, I've hit my wall of crazy assholes that have, that are, we somehow sympathize, are supposed to sympathize with and watch their story. After the Theranos thing and like Bill Gates and fucking Jeff Bezos, I'm like, why the fuck are we so fascinated with these douchebags that have something wrong with them? And that's why they're billionaires. But the thing is, the thing is, you the, the, the twist of We Crashed is that, you know, where this is going and he's not going to be a fucking billionaire anymore. I don't think well, you no, know where Theranos he never is was. going. <laughs> Actually, he's never had liquidity at any point. Well, he's, yeah. he's they start off showing you how much of a con artist he is and like, OK, yeah, yeah he doesn't. He wants to be, he wants to make, like, just like Amanda Seyfried's character is like, nope, yeah. you wanted to be a billionaire first, and then you got your idea to become one. You don't have faith in yeah. an idea. You yeah. want yeah. you want to be rich and powerful. I think I enjoyed this in the same way I enjoy, like, Wolf of Wall Street and Goodfellas. I like watching terrible people rise and fall. And so, I mm. like, the rise is interesting, even though I know he's fucking over other people. Like, And also, Anne Hathaway is presented as this character who, like, she is just as terrible. Yes. Her inferior... Her, in real life, oh yeah. her inferiority complex about Gwyneth Paltrow yeah. and the fucking yoga thing, and that the shit she pulls on her and best friend, and yeah, the, the shit she pulls on her best friend who she brought into the company, and then she gets insecure about it and she fucks her over. I was like, man, well, so I'm not sure if the what the if the if the show is trying to show like, oh, it isn't it cute how he pursued her? I'm like, he's very much stalking this lady. No, he's and a psycho, and he's a she's fucking a psycho psychopath. For, no, she's a psycho for falling for it. Like yeah. the second you see that that no. she went for it, she's like, you're like, oh, fuck. Yep. This is not a she was victimized by this guy. I, I, maybe, oh, no, they're both terrible. Maybe yeah. that's my thing is that I think what the show is trying to do with these with what shows like this are trying to do with this character says, look at what someone can do with unlimited confidence if they 
psych just psychotically believe in themselves. And yeah. I'm like, why are we celebrating something that someone that has something missing inside them that they need? I guess I don't that this validation that I don't see it as a celebration. I I see it as more. I see it as a cautionary tale. Well, I guess maybe it's more of like, why do we find this? So I'm done finding it interesting, I guess, is that I thought I thought I was. But this was so I mean, I watched the first episode and by the end of the I was like, I don't know if I care about these rich ass. It's Rover in a car wreck a little bit. And then I just kept watching after a a whole like Trump presidency Mm -hmm. of like watching uh, bullshitters make money and deceive people. I think I'm just I think I'm just done. I don't I get I get that. I thought I thought I was. Something about this, the way it's executed, is so fucking compelling that I binged through like all five episodes in a day. Like it, it had me. Oh, give right. me the kombucha, and he, she's doing that yogi thing, and I'm like, oh man, I hate everyone here. I'm so <laughs> yep, sick of yep. this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you guys ever been to one of these? Yeah, we have one in Austin. We work. No, we never work. been. No. They're really nice. They places. have kegs of beer on every floor, like a kitchen. Like a lot of the stuff. Wait, is we work free. still exists. Like yes. it is. Oh, oh God, yeah. The, like it's run I by different pandemic, people, but no, they're doing the good. Them. And I think industry still exists as well. Actually, so you know what's funny? Remember during the pandemic when I fucked my house up? Yeah. I had to go to a co-working <laughs> space. There were a lot of people that during the pandemic had to work yeah. from home, but their house they couldn't work from there. Like you know, kids or pets right. or whatever. So actually, I think co-working did pretty good during That's the pandemic. That's because communally gathering people you don't know seemed like a real bad idea during the pandemic. Well, they had, uh, I mean, obviously, they did, like, I had to wear a mask yeah. every day. But, you know, you also have, like, these private rooms you yeah, can get. Okay. And WeWork's probably set up a little better because they have, like, gl- actual, gl- well, you saw it in the show, like, glass enclosures for the different yeah. offices. So, like, I know... Uh, I talk about Mark Bernard all the time, but yeah, he got a space during the uh, quarantine uh, at WeWork, and yeah, he had like a little glass cube uh, that he just. The broke thing from. I found really interesting about this was the sort of the weird corporate culture, the stuff that I'm watching it, and I'm like, man, as as I think Les said, or you guys have all said, if this guy wasn't a fucking psycho who didn't know when to stop, this was actually a good idea he stumbled onto, like the notion yeah. of millennials don't want to work this way. And what if we give them a way to work? Yeah, what if I, I mean it was a smart idea. Hostile? Yeah. No, yeah. The, the actual idea is actually like when I I was surprised how I'm like, oh, that's actually inspired. Like that Yeah, yeah. I could see that of course they kind of fucking ruin it with it's like It's going to change the world. I'm like, oh yeah. my god, it's not it's yeah. fucking co-working space with beer. That's, Come on now. That's what it is. It's the crazy hippy dippy. I mean, of course she's related to Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow. Of course she I is. I mean, they do the same thing in like the dropout with like <laughs> they have a thinking room with a beanbag chair and I'm like, why do we always have to do the douchiest stuff of like a foosball table and just show how fun a <laughs> workplace is? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it could just be open people smiling and it would be better than ninety percent of workspaces in America. <laughs> I mean they do have the fuck closet. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you you haven't gotten to that episode yet, but uh, the uh the episode where I mean by the way, that Camp. PR person who gets fired, like she deserved to get fired. She fucked up hard. Yeah. But but also uh they they have Anna Hathaway's going up there and they the women employees are talking to her and she gets out of the meeting and she's like I went up to try and listen, and suddenly I'm being blamed for a fuck closet. And I'm like, that was one of the best lines in this yes. entire thing. Yeah, she walks out of that tent, walks directly to Adam. I did like where they found <laughs> the fucking, the S&M uh, room when they were, like, re-renovating. Yes, that was hilarious like, when they yeah, got, and they left the swing. Up. Keep the, keep like, the swing, keep and swing, lose the dildos. The, lose the dildos. <laughs> got a great line. So there's a, there's a meme that goes around of, like, take a movie or a show, uh, all Muppets keep one human actor. Yeah, yeah. So, so somebody <laughs> sent me this as I was uh, looking through, and I, I, I replied back, uh, we crashed, all Muppets keep Miguel. <laughs> really? I would keep, yeah, I would try and keep, uh, like, I would, Miguel's would role good. is perfect for Scooter. So... <laughs> I just I I love the idea of just like this long suffering human that's just watching puppets. Fucking yep. What is going on? Yeah, yeah. I would say Jared Leto, but Gonzo would really do make this. See, that's so. So it's Gonzo and Camilla as Leto as the as as Anne Hathaway. And uh, oh, I would love to see a chicken do a yoga thing. Let's let's write this. (laughs) I just want to see the chicken at the listening tent. How have we pitched a, uh, so far we've pitched, a, we're two for two on pitching a Muppet version of the shows we watch. Yes. I would also watch only Muppets in the building. Because Les and me really want to write a Muppet <laughs> movie. 
Yes. <laughs> oh, gosh. How is that not a standalone episode next season? <laughs> uh, anyway, any other thoughts on We Crashed? I, I guess, where did everybody else come down on this? I know, Les, you watched I, I'm really digging so it, uh, but they're all interchangeable. I'm just watching my uh, psych, like <laughs> sociopath CEO shows right now. <laughs> I don't. I don't know how to rate it because I really. I, I recognize the only reason I don't like it is just the basic concept and the premise, and I'm how tired of it I am. I, I had like yeah. a whole year where like shit like Dynasty was coming out, and I just couldn't watch fucking rich people. If this had come out before Dropout, and I watched mm-hmm. Dropout now, I probably would feel the same way about Dropout. Yeah, and I thought Dropout, it because yeah. it, there's not it's not significantly different. Yeah, Dropout. I haven't gone back to. Uh, Dropout. I I didn't. I dropped out of. But we crashed. I'm super into. Mm-hmm. Same. I'm I'm really digging this one. And ha- having gone from the documentary to the show, uh, you really hate the people in the documentary. <laughs> like, I really because hate, hate it's the not in the actors show. you may have liked in something else. That's the thing. I like the people in the show way more than the people in the documentary. There's part of me that's like, oh, maybe they. So when are they going to make the fictionalized Nexium show? You know, it's fucking coming. It's got to be coming. Are they oh, not? Gosh. I, I, yeah. I was trying to think oh, if there was, already was one. I was one. thinking they're going to do a fictionalized fire festival at some I'm surprised no one's done no, it. No, I that yeah. that I believe is already happening, I think. Yeah. yeah. Can if you do that, can you show sex in those? I mean, things? yeah, you can do the, yeah. if, you, if you're on HBO Max, whatever, you can show sex. But I mean like uh what, what is it? Your um but is it right to Oh no. You know, it's not the, it was it's a sex not right to that. do Nexium at all. Like that should not be done fictionalized, but they're going to do it anyway. <laughs> nah. like you're asking like you're asking the right like moral in like a moral question like oh can they do it like well yes obviously <laughs> should they well no of course not <laughs> is it gonna happen for sure <laughs> all right let's jump over to slow horses on apple plus there were two episodes of this i'm uh i'm curious what you guys thought of this who wants to who wants to start off i would like to begin uh as our uh resident accent a- expert. <laughs> Guys, we've been watching a lot of British shows, I feel like, past year that I have just not been into, all right? Like, one after another. What a relief it was <laughs> to turn this shit on and be like, I do like British stuff. <laughs> like, this is, I, okay, this is what I'm talking and about. our faith has been tested this year. <laughs> Kyle's losing faith in British shows. No. It's me, sci-fi for me and fantasy for less. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so this one wasn't an Anglo failure. And Randy never had faith to begin with. <laughs> nope. This show has uh, a very simple uh, premise, but they, I, the my the literally the only thing I dislike about the show is how like in the first ten minutes they try to set this premise up in like a way that like once you just kind of unpack how they start this show, it makes no sense whatsoever. Um, essentially, a uh, a CIA not CIA MI5. what do we call MI five. A, yeah, a secret agent with an accent who's not James Bond is chasing some terrorist around the airport and he catches him and it's like, oh no, it's the wrong guy. And it's like, you said blue jacket, white shirt. And he goes, no, I said white jacket, blue shirt. And he's like, oh no, the terrorist. So the guy <laughs> runs and they're like, stand down, stand down. And he's like, no, I got to get my guy. And as he runs and then he catches the terrorist, but it's too late and the terrorist detonates the It's a the bomb. great opener. Except, except he doesn't detonate a, a bomb. Because apparently exercise. it was a yes. training yeah. exercise. Yeah. But even though these guys failed at a training exercise, everybody treats it like they actually got people killed and punish them. Well, they should hit this harder of like, it was his final test of like, this was his make or yeah. break squ- sink or swim yeah. moment. Yeah. Because I've got to figure that they run things like this a lot. But yeah, this one is so elaborate and complex. This must have been a final test of some yeah. sort. I mean, but it, at least they weren't keeping record of what anyone was saying over comms. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's of, like, what wait I'm a minute, saying. How is there no tape? Yeah. yeah. And he's sticking to his story that, that, that Webb fucked up. Yeah, he sticks to yeah. his story that the other guy fucked up and said the wrong yeah. shirt combo. Well, and I think the thing there's is, there's no record, like, I guess. I love that, I love that we, the, we, the viewer, know who got, who got fucked. Like, we know the truth. But I think I, I can we? just buy... Yeah, we, we hear him say we hear him say it right. Well, we hear. Oh, I didn't realize guy, that we. Yeah, no. Yeah. The guy, the guy reads him the reads him the wrong info. Yeah, like he reads oh. him the wrong info. You go back and, and watch but, it. But that's he already a reconfirmation. The there are like a dozen people out there looking for this yeah. guy, and I guess he's the yeah. only one that ever got told. It, it, They're in the NASA control yeah. room. They got all of freaking Houston there listening but I to think him because yeah. it was a training exercise. I can buy into like they're not going to bother taping everything. They're not going to but like. Well, it also sounds like no one liked this kid. 
Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it is. Mostly it's the fact that he's a rich kid who everybody also already felt like he had a leg up. And they were his looking for a reason to get was, him. Uh, was old up in the high up in the service back in the day. Mm-hmm. And so they were, they were looking for a reason to kick him. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of it is. At least that's what I got out of it. Yeah, I, I definitely picked up on that. But also, I mean, honestly, I, I like his bit. I thought the opening was very compelling. But Gary Oldman playing the fucking Warren Ellis character here is is killing me. He's so good. <laughs> like oh, I love yeah. once his... they actually get to Slaw House, uh, yeah. it's it, it, like, the premise just gets better and better. Like uh, we've seen quirky. Uh, uh, we're putting together the team of misfits, and we're going to be the yeah. ones that secretly solve everything. That is not what this place is. <laughs> no, these guys are no. these guys are genuine <laughs> fuck ups. You're the guy that left a secret folder on a train. Like yep. I love that there are people that you did something that like oh no 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 we can never have you on an intelligence team again. But yep. also you're not exactly <laughs> fired. Yeah. yeah. No, it's also we don't but we don't want to release you in the private sector where you might do something worse. So we're gonna keep you here. Yeah. I, I, For people that have <laughs> them all trying to figure out what they've done or are just enough of a security leak that they can't be ex- immediately fired. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. they're not enough trouble to kill. Yeah. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm really enjoying this show. Like I, I watched, I, I didn't expect to tear through. I mean, after I just finished watching the first episode of Halo and was like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> I was mad there's only two of these. And yeah, and, yeah, and wanted too. to keep watching them. Was like, no, where's my third one? But especially after that fucking cliffhanger on episode two, dude. But the, oh right. But the <laughs> thing that kind of bothers me is that, like, I feel like on a lot of shows, we would watch this guy get sidelined, and he, they would be the only ones who know about mm-hmm. a thing. And that's really not what's happening here. No. He just can't. He just can't not be involved. You yeah. fucked up. Regardless of who's faulted, it, it came yes. down as your fuck up. You got punished for it. You're doing that punishment. The real MI five or whatever is on this. Yeah, but but they don't give a fuck. Is the thing like but they? They're he like he can't really know that. Yeah, like he yeah. just he just can't. He has yeah. to be the smartest, most important. And it's a little annoying where I'm like, okay, man, I could get it if you brought this to, if like you were finding all this and there was no chatter going back and forth. But yeah. the whole reason you're interested in this is because the big guys really are looking into it. He burns himself breaking into a package. Yes. But you can't not know. And, and I'm like, this is... And everybody knows this what is this burns, too. Yeah, every, it's yeah. like, did it hurt? Mother- yeah. I, I, just, I do shit. love that everyone knows this because, like, oh, yeah, yeah. we've all, we've all we've seen all some, some asshole try to... <laughs> but it, it's not like he's trying to save... I mean, it, he, he may well save London or whatever, but really what he's doing is trying to get back in, and it's desperate and yep. personal yeah, and absolutely. selfish. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think he's yeah. the villain. And she's why, honestly. Well, and he just... The revelation at the end of the second episode. That... <laughs> I, that's why I thought, like, how surprisingly funny this show was. Yes. How it's Gary so Oldman bitter, is so like, yeah. okay, so if you're asking me why you're fucking uh, sorting through rubbish is because, like, is because I don't like you and I want oh, you yeah. to quit. <laughs> if, yeah. if I yeah. could follow, if I, <laughs> if I could stand the side of you, I would follow you home on weekends and keep giving you shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, like, so, yeah, I think the weird thing for me is the, the tone of this is weird because it is comedic, but it's like darkly comedic. Yeah. And it's also serious. It's not quite suspicion like it, but it, but it, it sometimes hues close to that where I'm like, I don't know if I care about any of this, but then uh, they give me a character that I like and care about. The meanest thing I've seen on television in quite a while is the continuous every time they're in a room together. Oldman offers, I think it's Catherine is the other character. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Offers yeah. her a fucking drink every yep. time. Yep. And it's and it's yep. a it is wow. a stare down challenge of like, you're gonna have that drink with me. The first yep. time first yep. time he does it, you're like, okay, something is going on here because this is weird tension. And then you and see she's her putting going off to an a vibe. meeting. Well, I, even in that scene, I had a vibe of like these two actors are good enough that I'm like, she's a fucking yeah. alcoholic, you dick. Yeah, you yeah. Could see the yeah. energy yeah. on yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. And then she went to that AA meeting, I was like, yep. You're just an oh, asshole. Man. I thought the more cold blooded thing was like, uh, you know, who who died or like, you know, did your what'd your last uh, master yeah. die of or yeah. something like that? And then she goes home or like she has the flashback and you're like, oh no, her husband killed himself. Yeah, yeah. Like, and Gary Oldman the, very and this guy obviously knows, knows all that. this. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He, yeah he's, he's an that. asshole. Oh, he's so he's yeah. so he's the worst. Man. We didn't talk about Kristen Scott Thomas as the head of section. God, I love her. She's so good. Um, yeah, and she is like she just wants nothing to do with any. Taverner of these is that her character's name? Yeah, Taverner. Yeah, this Diana. this feels like a 
Greg Rucka book in some it's like it's like Greg Rucka and Warren Ellis could have co-written this story. Yeah. Um I'm digging it. I'm a lot more than I thought I would. I like it, but also it does look like it is slow horses and it is slow. Like it is <laughs> I am like, you've only got six episodes. This is yeah. reminding me, much as I love, say, uh The Ooh. Night Manager, which was also a slow John Lacar. You can go too far with that, and I'm a little worried they could tip that tip well, in the other direction. Rubicon. Also, we didn't talk about the yes. <laughs> white supremacists and their kidnapping victim at all. Which oh, is yeah, like, man. Yeah. Yeah. That whole thing. I, I think like they're, they're really stretching that out, and uh, if the if I hadn't, if I wasn't having so much fun watching the sl- sl- you know, what's it, Slow House, uh, yeah. if, you do realize if a joke is, if you have to explain a joke, it's not very funny, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I do like that these uh uh the 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 was he Pakistani and he, yeah and they like ah, I've killed enough you fucking Arabs and I'm like I don't think he even says he's Pakistani I'm like okay you realize that he's not well never mind yeah. it doesn't matter to you the <laughs> well, he flat out tells him at one point like man I'm 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 born here like my gra- my parents are born here yeah, yeah right he's yep. a he was a, he's a born like his grandparents British came over in the 70s he's like i yeah. what because you passed the citizenship test no man because i'm born here i do like that the terror the terrorist does have a point of like hey you speak of me a cow cauterist you can't even go up there and tell your own jokes and i'm like huh what a weird self-reflective moment to have with your kidnapper <laughs> right i love that his wife <laughs> friend is like you should go up there because and because you're so good and also because it's very weird for me to tell some of your jokes like, that's a really good joke <laughs> that i can't tell yeah yeah <laughs> i i, I realize yeah it's a very good joke it would be much better if you got up and said it to the point that i i spent a little bit of time th- misunderstanding the nature of their like comedy relationship because i like i spent a minute thinking oh this isn't a stand-up comic friend of yours that writes jokes but scared to tell them. I thought it was like a a fucking Andy Kaufman thing of like you have a yeah. Muslim friend that is sending you up there to pointedly tell these jokes as a white dude, like yeah. like it was yeah. a like it was a an, a performance art thing or something, you know. Yeah. And then realizing that like oh no, you're just a chicken shit. You just keep giving yeah. him jokes that he can barely tell. <laughs> well you can tell what you can tell when he, i love that set when he's up there when he's about to go into the joke he's he's demeanor goes here we go because <laughs> you know he's about to tell one of the muslim jokes yep yep also i do like that the this is a nice reversal of where we've been in spy shows for the last i don't know five decades that the the terrorists are fucking white nationalists I'm like it's about time we acknowledge mm-hmm. that we were staring one direction and we, we should have been, been staring the other because like you've already had a, a a funding increase yeah for out for uh international terrorism there's there was no funding yeah. increase for domestic terrorism and guess yep. what there's a lot more of that dumbasses yep yeah yeah uh yeah this is really good I I wow. and it should be easier to monitor since it's in our fucking country. <laughs> <laughs> and you have cameras everywhere <laughs> right yeah, like cctv yeah. i was like how does this keep happening isn't didn't you like don't you have a whole fucking surveillance system for that like nah but we only use it for watching brown people so Big increase in funding for not much <laughs> result like yeah yep all right y'all ready for dessert yep uh speaking Ooh. of uh, a secret creepy army that could be anywhere yeah um <laughs> i I I really love the first episode of this, but I was on record as saying that it's not very much like the comic, and I'm a little disappointed in that. And as we get deeper in, it's still not a lot like the comic, but I'm still really digging it. I'm like, I I love what they're doing here. Ethan Hawke is my favorite thing on the show, and that might end up being a problem. <laughs> yeah, that is that is true. Because I yeah I like his, his his whole scene. I also like that there's a halfway point between Stephen and Mark's Moon Knight. There's some sort of like tuxedo vaudeville fucking version i I guess he summons whatever he's like i they they told him to summon the suit and he misunderstood i loved that because the suit (laughs) is a it's it's in the comics it's like in the whole intervention i love that basically it's steven misunderstanding of word yeah i fucking love that (laughs) yeah that's that's and then fucking uh because ethan hawk is that whole speech about uh uh what's the egyptian god's name uh Ahmet, uh, Ahmet, I think. Ahmet, Ahmet, or Annette, yeah. uh, Ahmet. No, the Ahmet the one that's with Moon Knight. Kansu. 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 Kansu, yeah. Kansu, because he was the previous, like, oh, is he telling you this thing that he just said? Like, is he yeah, saying he's, he's a true real, vengeance? Yeah. He's a real fucking asshole, isn't he? 
Yeah. Oh, the I, gag with the wind and the weather was so great. And I'm just sitting there going like, dude, yeah. you better say something because Ethan Hawke is making a great point right now. Yeah. And you are well, not they, helping your case. They went out of the way to do that because they did like they show Ethan Hawke looks all he looks. He's like, oh, you're a vegan. Yeah, me too. I made some lentils. You should try it. And the guy and Steven's like, this is really good. Like, you're, he's a good cook. Well, it, it makes the joke even funnier later when he's like, summon the soup. Yeah. What are you yeah. saying? <laughs> and so it like. I thought they did a great job with like I was buying into it too. I was like, oh, they're doing the they're doing the Killmonger thing here, basically, where the guy, the villain's making a good point. Mm -hmm. But then I thought Stephen deflated. I think yep. Stephen deflated instantly. He's like, wait, so you're all cool with killing kids? Yeah, because he <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, goes, yeah, cool, 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 cool. Wait a minute, but yeah, if you're killing people <laughs> yeah. before their crime is. What is your stance on killing babies? <laughs> Yeah, and they're all like, "We're good with it." Yeah, yeah they're so, all like, "I'm like, okay, so okay." <laughs> see, that's where I, I see, I kind of draw the line there. By the way, I also love the reveal that no one else can see the jackals. Yes, <laughs> that's I awesome. loved that bit. I was so good. That, that just makes so him seem so much crazier. Oh, yeah. it makes him seem fucking insane. <laughs> yeah, like when he's in the street and they're like, "Is he doing a dance? Is he an art?" Like, he no, he's just seizure? some drunk. He's no, having he's a seizure. A, no, he's just drunk. he's just a fancy <laughs> drunk. <laughs> like, yeah i i i liked uh even their argument over the mirror when mark was refusing to relinquish control uh mm -hmm. and and real and like oh, no God, i know who country like i know he wants my wife as the next like when i'm yeah. done with my debt i know like and, yeah and that like dude country sucks it made sense of the, <laughs> of the desperation uh and their their argument actually worked well the thing is i think that this is one of the things that the comics have done well is that increasingly as they go on, they have painted Khonshu. Khonshu is the guy who resurrected Mark from death, but Mark was a fucking mercenary who killed people. Like, he was a bad guy, and Khonshu gets bad guys, and Khonshu yeah. is not a... He's he's not the god of justice. He is the god of vengeance, and he is not particularly concerned with doing the right thing. Well, they even point out, like Ethan Hawke says, I wonder if he got you because he thought you'd be easy to break, or because you were yeah, already broken. Already broken. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, which one is more fucked up? And I'm like, God, that is... He's preying on... Well, and, and Conchu even and says to him, to Mark, of like, you enjoy the work I have for you. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Like, and, and outright threatens him, and he's like, you want to keep doing it, or else I'm going to get your wife. Yep. Like, like he's also F. Murray, Murray Abraham was killing this so CGI great. Conchu. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Um, I love the look of it. Yeah, I love the bit where Harrow's talking to him, and Conchu's just kind of lurking on the building, watching. Like, God, fucking stop oh, talking. Yeah. Like, there's some great bits in there. Also, I like that they're not like I was a little worried they were going to stretch this out too long, uh, but they go right in like the like he's he's talk talking to Mark, and he goes right to no fuck this. I'm going to turn all this shit in. They're going to put me in a hospital and put me on a bunch of drugs. I'm crazy and I need to be stopped. Yeah. Yes. And I'm like, yeah. that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Of course his, you do. God his, to the point. <laughs> yeah. his immediate plan was like, I'm turning myself into the police. I am obviously insane. <laughs> they're going to, they're going to medicate me. This will be great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And I liked it on top of like separately. They're also moving forward quickly with like Haro has the sc uh, scarab now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like mm -hmm. we're not fucking around with like, spinning you know in, yeah, in the sixth episode he yeah. finally gets the thing he needs like no the bad guys are in the middle of their plan you better hurry so, uh, how much of an asshole must mark be for his wife to just still not like believe that mark is putting on this accent to fuck with her <laughs> <laughs> like after a certain point like you have to be such a douche for her to believe that you're capable of this <laughs> Well, the right. implication is that Mark's had had these multiple personalities for a long time. Yeah. So this is probably not the maybe the first time she's met Steven, but this is not the first time she's met another personality. I feel like it's, she's especially maybe she's not familiar or, with the concept because yeah. she thinks it's Mark fucking with her though. Like yeah. drop yeah. the accent. Yeah. It's like, like she this thinks is just it's how a I cover, talk. like a cover. Yeah, yeah. cover. Yeah, change yeah. cover move. And he, I, I do love, love that he's like, oh, do you sort of the divorce papers? Like, oh fuck, I would never divorce you. I'm Mark still seems curious like an idiot. if I'm still curious if like can't you basically picked a corpse on a battlefield and yeah. raised Mark Spector. Yeah. We, like, so did he, like, was Mark, all, was Mark a split personality prior to his death? Or did this yeah. start after? Where did Steven, and like, when did Steven happen? And that's the question, because in the comics, the, the splinter personality happens when Mark is resurrected, but it was later retconned and revealed that he's always had a dissociative disorder. And it just, like, came about and because was, of the stress and it just of came, being... And it just came about because of the stress of being resurrected. I mean, in the, in the comics, he dies in Kanchu's temple, and that's why he's resurrected. Yeah, mm. it sounded like they were on a mercenary thing and, and 
it in sounded a, like yeah, they were today. hunting artifacts or something like that. Maybe that's where it happened. Yeah. Yeah. I did love yeah. that there's a moment in here that I've never seen in another show or movie where, you know, they do the uh don't show her like she's about to show her the thing, like, no, don't show her, it'll put her in danger. And he goes, Uh, never mind. Like I or that thing where a character will yeah. say, yeah. You know what? It doesn't matter, I'll tell you later. Doesn't matter, yeah. Or something. Yeah. And I love and that she like, no, went. Fuck you! No, fuck you! Give me what's in there. Give me that. What's, what's in the what's bag? In there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've had finally. Of I've been today. waiting yeah. for someone to do that. Yeah. Like, no, just tell me what it is now, or just give me it. I know also, all of DC and Marvel have, uh, like you know, Wade Wilson, Slade Wilson bullshit going on. Yeah, but I yeah. don't think I'd ever quite put it together that Moon Knight is batshit crazy Doctor Fate. <laughs> oh it's yeah. The same like. Oh, I'm sorry. You touched the helmet. Tough shit. You are now the avatar of all of this yeah. bullshit. Now <laughs> tough shit, yeah. man. But but. Also, like the they haven't done as much of this in the comics. Moon Knight is much more the Shadow and Batman, mm-hmm. but mm. he's not exactly that. But he's more influenced that, and they definitely got away with that here. And I think that's probably for the good. I am still a little weird out that he has this costume that he summons, and he has like superhuman strength, which wasn't always part of his tricks. But I like that when he's in the costume, he is otherworldly. He is yeah. like a very dangerous person. I was thinking about that too in this episode of like, I love the costume in the show and like, I like all of this, but also yeah. one of the charms of Moon Knight is that like a lot of the superheroes that we love, he's just crazy enough to put on spandex and go jump around and do this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I kind of like the idea that like, Ooh. yeah, that different people's different, like, you, okay, you've got Conchu's power. You can summon, his vestments and power or whatever the fuck to be his yeah, avatar. Yeah. And for Mark, that means looking like a fucking Avenger with a cape and a hood yeah, and, yeah. and, and yeah. all that kind of shit. Like you look like Batman. And then for, uh, Steven, that just looks like, <laughs> like a, suit. Uh, a yeah. suit with white gloves. He rolls the <laughs> sleeves up and shit. It's great. Yeah. Uh, do you guys remember in back in, I guess, 2009, 2010, the Asgardians had to be aliens because they weren't sure people were going to buy gods and mysticism. Yep. And now we've got fucking Doctor Strange and the multiverse Ooh. and Moon Knight, the avatar of Khonshu. Like, you go by watch that first Thor movie. They are so gun shy about magic that they always have to mention. They're terrified of it. Th- that they mention yeah. like, oh, well, advanced technology is sometimes enough yeah. to be so advanced. It might seem like magic. They're so afraid of it. And now they're like, no, there's two dueling Egyptian gods. Just get on board. I fucking love that. <laughs> oh no! The, after after they did the raccoon, I think Disney went. Oh, I don't think there's rules anymore. There's there's no rules. Yeah. <laughs> um. I also one of the original things that Moon Knight did. Uh, he came. He first appeared in Werewolf by Night as like someone who was hunting Werewolf by Night. That's why he has the silver and the moon and all that stuff. Yeah. And I like that the jackals are like a little nod to him fighting werewolves. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's kind of neat. I thought I thought that was kind of because when he's being chased by that thing and when he like impales it on the thing, <laughs> it feels like a werewolf bit. And I and I thought that's a nice little nod. I like that you guys, for whatever changes you're making, it feels like they have respect for the source material. And I think that's one of the strongest things the MCU does is even when they're like, guys, that just it's not going to work in live action. We can't. I know you love it. We can't do it. Mm-hmm. They try to make something work in. They're like but we get it. We know why you love these things. And I can see that yeah. even as different as this is from the comics, the, the love for the source material comes through in it. They're trying to give you, they're trying to give you that with a feeling of it. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. That buys you a lot. Also the finale of this episode where uh, Mark is talking directly to Khonshu and Khonshu, I, I love the voice that Mary Abrams is giving Khonshu. He's, he's basically like, he's calling Steven an idiot. He's he's basically talking. To, he's like he's like the world's worst Dude, boss. I love that an Egyptian god is no different than your dick boss. Of like, yeah, he's just the worst boss. And he's like, where are we going? He's like, where the fuck do you think we're going? <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of my favorite moments in this episode was kind of small, but the very beginning of the episode, uh, it you know, uh, not Mark, uh, Stephen. Stephen, yeah. Steven is pretty much framed for destroying the bathrooms at the museum yes. Yes. and he gets fired yep. from his job. Yep. And then when he thinks the cops are there, he's like, is this about the bathrooms? They said they weren't going to press charges. <laughs> like, I've already been punished. Then, I yeah. mean, I was just like, I feel for this guy so bad right now. It wasn't me. It was the invisible like, jackal. No one can see. I do love that he's <laughs> in the <laughs> office and they, and they fire me. He's like, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. When he gets yeah. the guy to rewind <laughs> the tape and like, oh, yeah. Shit. No, yeah. I no, I see it from your perspective. I get it. Yeah, yeah. You want yeah. Scotty still, Steven? But <laughs> there's no, there's no desperate. No, you have to believe me. Steven is like, no, I, yeah, yeah, I have to go. I also, I also love the bit where he's like, I eat one steak and I've gone completely mental. <laughs> yes. yeah. I love that. That's what he thinks like has broken him. That's what did the, it. That's what did I, it. Was the steak. I really, I was yeah. waiting for Mark to 
look over and tell him that like man you've you're only vegan like six hours out of every three days <laughs> I eat so much meat, goddamn! Like, I, I eat, eat so, so much. Have you not ever wondered? <laughs> have you ever wondered why you wake up and your breath smells like fried chicken? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, there was a. Uh... Dang it! Lost my thought. Never mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I I am really digging this. I I was worried. I was legit worried that this was going to be bad, and instead, I am. Just Moon is as... a weird character, like in any mm-hmm. medium. I'm waiting for every Wednesday, just like always, to to watch this this show. Yeah, and I'm, I'm already sad. There's only six episodes. We're almost halfway through. I was real worried about this being way up its own ass, and I yeah. I, I enjoyed the first episode, it's, and part of me yeah. was still like, yeah, but we'll see if you keep it up. And then it's this week. I loved oh, it. Oh no, there's no there's no Halo self serious of this. Like, oh no, no they're no. super having fun with like, this. Like, no, this, this is yeah. We're fighting and jackals I, and Egyptian gods. This we're having fun. Like this is not. Yep. <laughs> well, and yep. and I, like in the co- I mean, for me, like the, I was glad to see the suit turn up, mm-hmm. but then I was sad that it was still st- like I could tell from the from the way he like hits the ground and falls over. Yeah, you're like oh, that. Like Steven. oh, that's Stephen. <laughs> uh, and I was a little disappointed because in the comics, like it's it's like if you told me that Gray Hulk were just a shitty Hulk. Uh, yeah, yeah. Joe Fix and like it. no he's yeah. a whole other character he's joe fix it and and like i so part of me kind of wanted the the fucking moon knight the and, mr. yeah knight. that yeah, mr knight yeah but i i still they god damn it the costuming looks so good it's great it, like it i honestly so i like the motion. mr knight suit yeah. better than the the moon knight costume looks a little puffy dude the mr knight suit looks really good like it's funny, yeah. but also I'm like, actually, that suit works. The, the Moon Knight good. suit yeah. uh, is as badass as it is. He looks a little soft and plush. Like, he looks yeah. huggable to me. Uh, though yeah. I do love yeah. that they've got, like, eye ridge, skull eye ridges around his yeah. eyes there. That Man, looks fucking great. The, but... the transformation effect here when he gives Mark the body and Mark's eyes start glowing and the hood comes up and he becomes, like, Moon Knight. You're like, oh, shit, this shit's about to go down. Like, they did a great job of that transformation. And he pulls it all back yeah. into himself. It's great. Yeah. They they like that effect. They're like a, a, a what's her name, Kate Blanchett in the Thor movies, where she does that thing with her hair of like, yeah, yeah. Why yeah, doesn't she keep yeah. her hair always like that? So we can do this cool so thing every that. once in a while. Yep, yep, <laughs> yeah. Look, I just I just want there to be. I don't know if this could happen. Maybe in She Hulk. Maybe in some future movie. I want Bruce Banner and Mark Spector to talk about how shitty it is sharing a body with a psychopath. Right. That I want oh, them to oh, talk oh, about. Oh yeah. <laughs> that would be like have a whole meeting of like start a uh, whole meeting of alternate identities. It, He's like, how many times have you woken up in tattered clothes with no idea what the fuck is going on? I know, right? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a it's, it's really bad when you're not in your own country, even, too. It's like... Yeah, yeah. Like, where's my like, passport in my other pants, I, yeah, I guess? The Hulk, the Hulk doesn't keep a passport as far pants. can you jump? <laughs> oh, thankfully only a block. Yeah. <laughs> what, when you made the comment about Ethan Hawke being your favorite thing about this show... Yeah. And what's interesting about that is anytime Oscar Isaac is in anything, yeah. he is always the scene stealer. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm I'm having a lot of trouble thinking of another movie where it's not you put him in there Dude, he's and then doing great automatically in this show all the too, attention. But yeah. I, I gotta admit, Ethan Hawk is at it like Ethan Hawk is magnetic well, as He's Har- the as scene Harrow. stealer in this. Like yeah. Oscar Isaac is still great. Oh, yeah, like, he's, doing he's great. playing the, the leading man. He's playing a cult leader that is like, no, I get why people join this cult. This seems kind of yeah. cool. <laughs> Yeah. Like yeah, you're taking a huge risk. You might just be killed when you touch him. But right. yeah, and and you got to be on board with killing babies. But otherwise, well, but otherwise it seems kind of so neat. Free lentil soup. When he movie kills night. the homeless guy, and he's yeah. like, "Sorry, that's mine, but I can give you food and shelter if you need it." Here, t- oh, you're dead. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. He, well, I yeah. think he meant that. You know, if the scales said so. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was like, "Oh, yeah. wait a minute. Okay, so sorry about that." <laughs> Yeah. No, you talk too loud in a movie one time, you're done, sorry. Yeah, you're done, son. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, great. I'm enjoying it. Can't wait for next week. And I think that wraps it up for us this week. Uh, yes, we made it through the whole episode without realizing I didn't do my TV diaries. What? <laughs> I was you waiting. Didn't. You didn't. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Less, oh, less you realized, didn't. I thought. And I realized it. it just, we Dude, went we were already we went 40 long. minutes in, so I'm like, we I got so it long. All right. Oh, you're right. We Half did. your TV diaries is the same as mine. <laughs> Next week, you get Kyle Slot. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, all right. You well, uh, thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Les. Thank you, Nick, for uh, for not having a TV diaries this week and keeping us like 20 minutes shorter, I guess. For sure. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm here for, to not talk. <laughs> <laughs> thank you to our listeners. 
you've Thank got you to podcasting our patrons. down. Uh, reminder that you can go to patreon.com slash TV dude, throw us that dollar an episode, listen to us talk about a shit ton of Nick Cage movies and other things we've talked about too. And uh, until next week, dudes up. The TV Dudes is an independently run podcast out of Austin, Texas. We are exclusively listener supported. If you'd like to help us out, go to patreon.com slash TV Dudes. No, you can we also were find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and at like, okay, TV Dudes. So get, All the music for our show is done by our friend and original just, TV Dudes, gonna, Gregory oh, wait, J. Amani Smith. Through it, to find so out more about us, go to thetvdudes.com. So. I'm Randy Lander. I'm Les Weiler. And I'm Kyle Scott. Thanks for listening. And I was like, oh, and we're doing power rankings. So I was like, yeah, I better just, we, let's just skip this week. <laughs>